In this session, we're going to be talking about estimates, accuracy, and precision. So this is the first part of the four-part session. So let me quickly point your attention to this because this is very important as a scientist. Aristotle once said, it is the mark of an instructed mind to, re to rest assured with the degree of precision that nature that the nature of the subject admits and not to stick to seek exactness when only an approximation of the truth is possible so you should know when it's possible when it's only possible to get an approximation and when it is possible to get an, uh, an exact value so this is going to be the cross of discussion around this topic today so at the end of this course of this or this session this four-part session you should be able to explain what we mean by estimate accuracy precision in terms of measurement in scientific research so if I ask you what do you understand by estimate a dictionary uh, definition implies that estimate implies that to judge tentatively or approximately the value the what or significance of something or put another way to determine roughly the size extent or nature of something so if you look at it carefully estimation has to do with rough or tentative or approximate value of something okay so why do we do it in science what prompts us to to use estimate instead of the actual measurement at times estimate is carried out in order to give a rough check of more exact measurement in the sense that we want to be sure that what we have gotten is actually within what is actually possible so estimation give us an idea uh, it gives us a rough check of more exact measurement it could also help us to do a kind of rough check rough check of result or hypothesis that if you if somebody gives you a measurement of something from obtained from somewhere you could do looking at an understanding of what it should be and what it has been and all sort of that you can estimate that okay the value should be between this and this for example if somebody tells you that the temperature of a river state in uh, in uh, August or let's say June is 39 degrees Celsius you know that that result seems dodgy because basically looking at what it has always been that kind of temperature if you do your own estimates that okay this is the trend of t temperature over the months the raining months it is quite impossible to get 39 uh, degrees Celsius we also use estimates to obtain values when resources are not available to actually go and take measurement okay for example at times we know we use the relationship that we know between two or three different things we use that relationship to estimate for another one that is difficult to measure so for example we we know that the higher you go the cooler it becomes or also let me think uh, let me pick another example that is more related to human uh, social sciences and humanities we know that depending on your age your age the level that you are supposed to be at a particular age we can estimate that if you had so 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 if you are so 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 age and you graduated at the normal age that everybody graduated and you joined the service at so 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 time at so 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 time you should be at level so 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 assuming everything is 
going the way it's supposed to go. So when it's difficult to obtain the real value at times and the resources to go and do it is very uh, demanding, we can use estimate in, in as a substitute for um, the real value. When it's also difficult to obtain real value precisely, we go for estimation. When it is difficult to measure precisely, we go for an estimate. And also, we use estimate when no actual theoretical value exists. If we cannot find any theoretical value that exists, actual theoretical value that exists for a particular uh, thing that we are interested in measuring, then we can use estimate to get a rough idea of what it is. Estimation also gives us an idea of what are the range of possible values of a particular uh, phenomenon that we're measuring. What is possible? Okay, so we can use estimation to get an idea of what is the upper limit, what is the lower limit. So we know that if we have the opportunity to, to take a measurement, our measurement should fall within this range. These are the six reasons why we actually use estimate in scientific research. Most of the time, it will be that it is difficult for us to take a precise measurement or the resources to actually go and take the real measurement is too exorbitant. We might opt for using uh, estimates. So, how do we go about doing it? First of all, you need to understand what is available in terms of what is known, what is the uh, state of art in terms of what is the, the current body of knowledge that exists about what you want to go and carry out estimation for. Are there some equations, are there some models that have been developed to help you to do the estimation? Okay? If there are if there are, then try and adapt, if necessary, to adapt what is what has been said in the literature to adapt it to your own situation and outline the procedures that you are going to use to answer the question in uh, uh, in front of you. So let's think of it. For example, if I want to estimate your shoe size. I could use the understanding that is already in existence because let's say I want to cover the shoe sizes of uh, a thousand or two thousand students in a particular school or for all the primary school across the social local government. It's going to be very demanding to go in there and do this. Okay, so I can look at what is the relationship between, if there are 16 literature, I can look at the relationship between shoe size, the forearm length, and the age, and the height of the student. I can now measure one of them, or two of those things, and use it to estimate for the other one that I didn't measure. So instead of me having to measure three or four things, I can use the measurement of one or two things to estimate for the other ones that are unknown. So, you must use what you are, the existing body of literature and the existing knowledge to help you understand how can you go about doing this estimate. For example, it is possible now to look at some indicators in the environment to use those indicators to infer the level of air pollution. For example, we can look at the the presence or absence of some animals or some plant in a particular environment and that can give us an indication of how polluted or how well the environment is okay we can also look into the household for example if there are some research that shows that if you look at this the quality of the front door of a house or the roof 
the refund material that can give you an idea of the income level of that particular household so these are some of the ways by which you can use you can estimate when it is difficult to actually do the measurement in uh, in the situation you are investigating so before you go on remember four steps you need to have in your mind you have to know what is known outline some of the possible procedures you are going to use in order to carry out your estimation the procedure then you go on to identify what are the resources you are going to use and then always at the back of your mind make sure you have your assumptions clear and in in trying in writing up your work you must also indicate what are your assumptions okay i like what is known i'd like the procedure you are going to use list the required resources keep an eye on your assumptions once you have that put together you can do your estimation let's look at an example what is the perception of older lecturers to change in academic policy okay what do we know about this about this uh, particular uh, question we know from time that older lecturers tend to as people get older they tend to not necessarily lecturer but as people get older they seems to be very resistant to changes in things they are used to a particular way of doing things so they might not want to go with it okay there are some also some techniques by which we can rate perception okay so you you need to look at that and what are the things you are going to how are you going to do it which procedure are you going to use are you going to use likert scale to estimate their perception or you are going to use a, another different types of uh, scaling to gauge their on this, uh, their perception what are the resources you require to make this estimate of perception possible do you need five different questions asking different aspects to gauge perception or do you need 10 questions 10 item uh, uh, question or segment so you need to understand how what are the processes and the procedure you are going to follow in order to estimate this their perception to change and then finally you must have a clear view of what are your underlining assumptions. one of our assumptions will be that if we ask this question this particular question in our questionnaire should capture this aspect of their perception uh, this particular question should or statement should capture this part of their perception so you must have this clear and the reason must be justified okay so that's is that